Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. And we have some men who would love to give you one so that you can have God's word open for yourself on your lap. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Christian, you do not belong to you. You are not free to live however you want. You are not free to live for yourself. At one time, you were a slave to sin. You lived in submission to yourself, to your sinful flesh. You did what you wanted because you were a slave to sin and a slave to your flesh and its passions, just like those who do not know God. But there has been a change in our ownership. You are not your own. Church, we are not our own. We have been bought with a price, sealed by the Holy Spirit, given to us and called to live for the glory of our new master to whom we now belong. Look down at the text of Romans, I mean, of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, and read with me. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. If you are a Christian, a costly transaction has taken place to purchase you. You have been bought. You have been purchased. A price has been paid. That same word for bought, Purchased. It appears in Revelation 5 9, where Jesus is worshiped at his Father's throne. The four living creatures and the 24 elders fall down before Jesus the Lamb, worshiping, singing, Worthy are you because you were slain and purchased. It's the same word as bought here in 1 Corinthians 6 20. You were purchased. And with your blood, they praised Jesus. They said, with your blood, people from every tribe and tongue and nation were purchased. Christian, you were purchased at this price. You and I are not our own. We are to glorify God with our bodies because we were bought with the precious blood of Jesus. As it says in Acts 20, 28, we are the church of God that he purchased with his own blood. And it is this price paid in the one who paid it, who we remember each week at communion. In a minute, men will pass a tray down each row. And in that tray will be small cups, each filled with juice and each containing a piece of bread. And these are symbols, physical, touchable, tasteable reminders for us each week of Jesus and the price he paid to purchase us. The juice pointing to Jesus's blood and the bread to his body. There's nothing meritorious or intrinsically powerful in this bread and juice, the symbols, but we're following Jesus's example and command by taking these symbols in remembrance of Jesus's precious blood and body spilt and broken for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. This morning, Christian, I want you to meditate on this simple but profound truth from 1 Corinthians 6.20, that because you have been bought with a price, you are not your own. Therefore, as Paul concludes in 1 Corinthians 6.20, glorify God in your body. So when the bread and juice come, if you're a Christian, take it from the tray and declare as you do that the blood to which this points was the price at which you were bought. Declare as the bread and juice come that you are not your own and declare that your body exists to glorify the one who gave it for you, who gave his for you and resolve to live a life consistent with that declaration.
it is appropriate to pause before you take the bread and juice and to evaluate our lives. Do our lives clearly show devoted, solitary allegiance to the one who bought us? Where we are glorifying God in our lives, that's his power working through us. That's evidence of his grace for which he gets the glory. But until we are glorified, no doubt this time of reflection and evaluation that you ought to go through each time you take communion, really every time that you sit before God, when you read his word, when you go to small group, but especially now as you prepare to take the bread and juice, you ought to evaluate your life. And there's no doubt that until we're glorified, this time will reveal sin. All sins are out of step with the life that we are called to live in honor of our new owner and the price that he paid for us. But believer, don't hesitate to search for sin in this time. Just because it's out of step with, inconsistent with, doesn't mean that you ought not, ought not to look for it. Rather, sin cannot undo what God has done in the gospel. And when you take the bread and juice, you declare I am a sinner in need of grace. Sin can't undo that. And the life that God purchased and called you to until he comes will be one of confession and repentance, even as you seek to glorify him in obedience. So remember, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Nothing can be added to this purchase price he paid. Nothing can be added. You do not have to and you must not even try to add to this payment. And it's so easy to try to smuggle merit into this time. To feel like, oh, I can come. I can take the juice because I've had a particularly obedient week. I've done well. I'm not aware of my sin. Therefore, I feel worthy to take the bread and juice. Or oh, maybe I should hesitate. Maybe I should just let it pass this week. I've, I've lived a week of sin. I, I haven't been glorifying God with my body. Brothers, sisters, this is a chance to declare eternal life, your new life with Christ, your identity as a Christian, as a son of God, your identity as a slave of God is not that because you have earned it, because you have obeyed, but rather because you have been bought with a price. So in weakness and brokenness, where there's sin, run back to your Savior and by his power and grace, turn from your sins and glorify him in obedience. There's nothing you can do to make yourself worthy to come to God. When Jesus paid this price, what did he declare? What were his words? It's finished. Our good works and fruit are not the ground of salvation, but they're the fruit of it. Agree with God by confessing your sins and embracing the grace that he offers and by not smuggling for a minute, for even a second in your thought, I deserve this because of my obedience or I am worthy. We are only worthy. We can only be Christians because we have been bought with the price of God's precious blood. He bought you, he forgave you, he cleansed you, and you were sealed with his Holy Spirit. Therefore, glorify God with your bodies. This God-glorifying life is what God has called each Christian to. There can be no Christians living for himself or herself. There can be no Christian here comfortable with unconfessed, unrepentant sin in his or her life. He has not called us to impurity, but in holiness. And if you disregard this warning, you aren't disregarding me, you're not disregarding man, you're disregarding God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Don't disregard God. Confess your sins. Repent. Let's glorify God with our bodies. 
Let's all take this bread and juice, Christians, in remembering Jesus in ensuring that our lives are in step with the God-glorifying life that he purchased us to. But let me warn you, if you're not a Christian, if you have not believed, you're not God's. If you haven't repented of your sins in faith, he hasn't given you his spirit. And Romans 8, 9 says, if he hasn't given you his spirit, you are not his, you do not belong to him. And if you don't belong to him, you cannot remember rightly a purchase price that was not paid for you. If you haven't put your faith in Jesus as your only hope for salvation, just let the bread and juice pass when it comes. You're still a slave to sin, and you will pay the penalty for those sins which you are choosing over Christ for all eternity if you reject him. But you don't need to stay in this condition. The priceless gift of salvation is a free gift for all who would believe. It is free, but it was costly. The price is that which we declared was paid. It's the very life of God the Son, the one whose birth we remember at Christmas, whose life and death we remember and proclaim now at the Lord's Supper, and under whose reign we will live for eternity. So if you're not his, if you don't know this salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, don't leave here without talking to me. There will be some people over here on your left at the end. Or ask anyone next to you who does take the bread and juice about this hope. Christians, take the bread and juice when it comes. Declaring, remembering, proclaiming uh, this price that was paid and the one who paid it for you. We are not our own. Men, please serve us. Take communion on your own as you're prepared, and I'll come up and pray in a few minutes.